The low frequency eddy current analysis capability in Apicus allows you to calculate eddy currents that are induced in a conductor placed within a time harmonic magnetic field. The magnetic field can be generated by a coil carrying a time harmonic current at a known frequency. This modeling technique is used in this example of a conducting rod surrounded by a current coil. The time harmonic current through the coil generates a magnetic field. The magnetic field induces currents in the conducting rod. The consequence is joule heat dissipation and Lorentz force on the conducting rod. The solution procedure is based on obtaining a time harmonic solution to Maxwell's equations describing electromagnetic phenomena under the low frequency assumption. And hence, it accounts for strong coupling between the electric and magnetic fields. The Joule heat dissipation and Lorentz force output can be used to drive subsequent mechanical, heat transfer, or coupled temperature displacement analyses. Note that the Abacus eddy current analysis capability is well suited for applications in which the responses to the source current is of more interest than the sources of the current. For example, in this transverse flux induction heating problem, a conducting sheet is sandwiched between symmetrical coil windings, such that the magnetic flux density is normal to the plane of the sheet. The result of interest is the joule heating generated in the plate due to the induced current. This next example includes a conducting hollow sphere in an external magnetic field. In this case, rather than modeling the coil windings, the magnetic field is specified directly. We assume that the field's source is far away from the spherical shell and unaffected by the sphere's presence. Here is a resulting contour plot of the rate of joule heating generated by the induced current. Eddy current analysis is not currently supported in Apicus CAE. Therefore, while the workflow to generate an electromagnetic model can begin in Apicus CAE, the resulting input file will require subsequent modifications in a text editor. The first step in the workflow is to create the geometry. The model must consist of the structure of interest and the surrounding medium. Since the tie constraint functionality is not currently supported for electromagnetic analyses, all the simulation geometry must be included in a single partitioned part, which you can generate in Apicus CAE using manual partitions or using the part merge functionality. Once the geometry is created, you can use Apicus CAE to define any sets and surfaces required for the application of loads and boundary conditions later, to create materials and assign electrical conductivity, to assign section properties, and to mesh the geometry using a continuum element type that has the same shape and connectivity as the electromagnetic elements. For a three-dimensional problem, the default C3D8R element type is fine. At this point, you can create a job for the model and write out the input file. Then, in a text editor, you will change the continuum element type to an electromagnetic element type. Then add magnetic permeability to the material definitions, specify the electromagnetic analysis type, and add loads and boundary conditions to the surfaces defined in Apicus CAE. To demonstrate the workflow, we will use the induction heating of a cylindrical rod example. But before we get started, I'll highlight some details of the problem setup. To take advantage of symmetry, only one-eighth of the geometry will be modeled. The load will be a current specified in the coil. Joule heat will be computed in the electromagnetic analysis, and the output from that analysis will be used to run a subsequent thermal analysis. Presenting most of this demonstration will be electromagnetic analysis specialist Krishna Gundu. In this model, what we have are a model for electromagnetic analysis and a model for heat transfer analysis. These are not coupled. The electromagnetic analysis contains a coil and the cylindrical rod and the surrounding medium. Again, we are doing only one eighth of the geometry because we have three part symmetry. In a subsequent heat transfer analysis, we only have the conducting rod. 
We will compute the joule head in the conducting rod from an electromagnetic analysis and we will use that as a heat source for a subsequent heat transfer analysis. If you actually look at the parts, if you have three parts, air, coil, and rod as the three parts, and also we have three instances. We have rod, coil, and air. So now we have to merge these three insta instances into uh, a single instance and create a new part. So I'll select the merge cut tool. I'll give it a name. I'm merging geometry. I will suppress the instances and I'll retain the intersecting edges. Then I'll select the entire region and then click done. So what it did is it created a new instance called domain one and also it created a new part called domain. As you can see, the rest of the instances are suppressed. We only have one, inst one instance in an electromagnetic analysis. Once we have generated an instance for the complete uh, problem geometry, including the surrounding region, next we would like to identify the various uh, parts using element sets. So now I will create uh, element sets. The best way to do it is uh, use a display group tools. So I am going to re replace so I'm selecting rod and then creating an element set for that. Then I'll create an element set for the coil. Okay, now we have created three element sets uh, representing each of the uh, parts that we have. Next thing that we would like to create is surfaces because we will be applying boundary conditions on, on the surfaces. So we have three symmetry surfaces. We will create an element set for each of those symmetry surfaces. So I'm calling this surface x0, meaning that it's, it's the plane corresponding to x equals to 0. And then I pick the plane. We have one, one last surface to pick, which is the outer surface. So we will pick the outer surface now. OK, now we have created the element sets and the surfaces. Next thing to do is create material properties and assign material properties to sections. So I'm creating a um, conductor as the first material property. We go to the other menu, electrical, and we want to specify electrical conductivity. So let's specify one to the seven. And note that we cannot specify magnetic uh, permeability here, and we don't have to specify uh, electric permittivity. So that's all we have here. And then let me create another material called air. And I'm assigning uh, electric conductivity of So for the uh, air material, we have specified a conductivity of uh, 1,000. Um, and again, we don't have to specify any other material properties. So that's all we have for uh, material properties. 
the next thing that we need to do is create sections. So we're generating two sections. So we generate a conductor section for which is a solid homogeneous section. And then pick conductor as the material. Air section and assign air as the material property. Then we go to section assignments and then we select regions by set. Pick air as our region and then assign air as this section and select coil as the region. We are assigning air to the coil. This is because for this example the current in the coil is specified directly rather than modeling the source that is responsible for the current. So finally we have rod and we assign conductor to the rod. So that's it. So we have assigned um, material properties to various sections. The next thing to do is to generate a mesh. We would, ideally we would like to generate a sweep mesh and we would like to specify hexahedral elements for the sweep mesh. If you look at the CAE manual it says that if your region is connecting to the axis of symmetry then you cannot use hexahedral uh, elements for generating a sweep mesh. So we will have to partition uh, the region that, that is connecting to the axis of symmetry. We will do that now. So we select extend by surface. Then we select the region that you want to partition. and then select the surface that you want to extend. Okay, so now it, it created a partition near the axis of symmetry. Now we can go ahead and assign mesh controls. We are using sweep mesh. Okay, and then we would like to make sure that we are using a compatible element type. And we can see that we have C3D8R as the default element, which is which is okay for us. That's what we want to pick, so we don't have to modify anything there. Okay, so now we can generate a sweep mesh. But before that, we would like to give some uh, seeds for different edges because we know that we want less number of elements away from from the coil. So we will give some seeds to different edges. And for the outside region, we'll give 0.05 as seed. And then we use single bias seeding for these edges. Single bias seeding. We have the seed in the correct direction. So let's set the minimum size to 0.05 and the maximum 0.05. Click OK. Okay, so we seeded um, all the required edges that um, that we are concerned about. The only thing that is left to do is mesh the part. We have generated a mesh such that um, I put more elements near the region of interest and less elements away from the region of interest. Now finally the only thing that we have to do is create a job and then we create a input file for the job. Um, we have uh, only one part and then in assembly we have just one instance. So this completes the electromag uh, model for electromagnetic analysis. What we did is um, 
we went to the part module and we replaced um, uh, the C3D8 R elements with EMC3D8. That's the first thing that we have to do. And then we come down and we define magnetic material properties um, for all the materials. And then uh, if required, we specify an orientation in the assembly module. Then we specify um, our electromagnetic analysis type. We specify the frequency. And then we specify the loads. Then we specify the boundary conditions. And we request outputs. And only request uh, joule heat, body force output, and the conducting regions where we would carry out a subsequent analysis. And that's all we have to do uh, in, in a keyword editor. Now that you have seen how to create the induction heating of a cylindrical rod model, I will show you some result plots which were generated in the Abacus CAE visualization module. First, here is a vector plot of the real part of the induced current. You can see that the current is curling around the z-axis and is largest in the portion of the rod that is nearest the coil. Here is a contour plot of the rate of joule heating generated in the rod due to the induced current. The heat generation is largest at the center of the rod due to its proximity to the coil. To run a sequentially coupled thermal displacement analysis, first run the electromagnetic analysis. Then prepare an input file for the subsequent heat transfer analysis. The thermal analysis will be performed on the rod only. The joule heat output from the electromagnetic analysis will be read in from an intermediate mapped database file as concentrated flux using the C-flux keyword. If the subsequent analysis included displacement, then the Lorentz force would be read in as concentrated loads using the C-load keyword. What I have not mentioned yet is how to create the intermediate mapped database. This is done using the EM loads utility. This utility does two things. It maps the centroidal output generated by the electromagnetic analysis to nodal output. And it maps output between dissimilar meshes. Finally, run the heat transfer analysis. In this animation, you can see the temperature rise in the rod resulting from the conduction of the joule heat over the course of two minutes. We see that heat is being conducted towards the end of the rod from its center. The maximum temperature rise in the rod after two minutes is about 20 degrees. To conclude, I would like to make you aware of some of the limitations in the current low frequency eddy current analysis capability in Abacus. First, I will point out that the electromagnetic thermal structural coupling is only sequential. Some applications require a fully coupled solution. For example, cases when electromagnetic properties are temperature dependent, or situations where large deformations may change the electromagnetic response. Also note that nonlinear magnetic materials are not supported, so hysteresis losses are currently ignored. This is a new functionality in Abacus 611. We would like to know what you think. Please contact your local office with any feedback or request for enhancements you may have. Thank you.